Greetings. Are you looking for a way to easily provide a PDF to your students in a Teams assignment where they can actually mark on it, write on it, and then turn it back in? Well, we've got a solution for you. This video is going to walk through how to use your class notebook, which is built into your class team, to create an assignment with either images or PDFs that your kids can now mark on and do what you need them to do. So let's jump in to take a look. So as you can see, I'm over here in my class team. And the very first thing we're going to need to do is make sure that we're inside the general channel and we're going to come up to the top of our tabs and we're going to click on class notebook. Now this is the very first time I'm going into class notebook for this class, which means it's going to take a moment to set up. And we're going to have a couple of questions we're going to need to answer. So let's click on set up a OneNote class notebook. And I'm going to just choose a blank notebook so we can start clean. Now there's several different sections inside a class notebook that you're going to get that are different from a standard OneNote notebook. So let's walk through these. First of all, we have the collaboration space. The collaboration space is a place where all students and the teacher can edit. It's a great place for, well, collaboration, just as the name entails. The next space you're going to get is called the content library. The content library is a place where you can publish materials or references for your students, but students can only view the content. This might be a place where you build some assignments or put notes or things following a lesson. The next section is called a teacher only section. This, this part's not even visible to your students. It's a private space for you and your content. And finally, we have the student notebooks. This is a private space for each student. You can see it and you can edit, but it's only visible to the student in question to whom it's assigned. So let's go ahead and set some of these things up. I'm gonna come down here to the right on the bottom and click next. Now, this page is asking us what we want our students' private notebooks to look like. By default, it's going to start with their name, and then it's going to have some default tabs or sections inside. Microsoft is recommending handouts, class notes, homework, and quizzes, as you can see, but we can remove any of these that we don't want or add some for ourselves. So I'm actually going to add one here called Classwork. Once I'm happy with what I've added or removed, I'm going to click Create on the bottom. And once it's ready, it's going to pop up right here on our screen inside of Teams. So let's take a look at what we have. So we've got our menus and such across the top. And then right up here in the top left corner of the work page, if I open this, it opens our navigation pane. And you'll see that I have a welcome section. And then underneath of that, I have some different tabs. I've got the collaboration space, the content library, and teacher only, just like we described. And then below that, I have a private space for each one of the students in my class. Now, I'm looking at this from the teacher's perspective, which means I see all of my students. Each one of my individual students sees the collaboration space, the content library, and then their own space. But that's all. So what's the best way to understand the organization of a class notebook? Well, think of this as the digital equivalent of a three-ring binder. We organize our three-ring binders using sections or tabs. This works the same way. And you'll notice my welcome tab here is a single tab by itself. But each one of these other ones has kind of a multicolored tab. If we go inside any of these, let's look at Curly Howard here. Once I open up his section, you'll notice that he has those five different tabs that we designed earlier inside of his section. Only he and the teacher can see those. Now, if I click on any one of these, such as homework, you'll see that it loads a page list. And right now, he doesn't really have any content because we just created this. So right now, he's just looking at an untitled page. But essentially, that's how a notebook is laid out. For our purposes today, we're not going to really worry too much about the student sections. We're going to come up here to the content library. Inside the content library, we have a section called Using the Content Library. And there's a single page in there that kind of walks us through some ideas. What we're going to do is we're going to add a new section to this by coming down to the bottom and clicking Section. And I'm going to call this Classwork Masters. And I'm going to hit OK. Now I have a section where I'm going to keep my master copies of all the classwork I want my students to do. So let's prep an assignment for our kids. Right now I have an untitled page. But let's go ahead and click over here on the main page to set this one up. So I have a title up here. Let's call this one Text Marking. 
And what you'll notice if I open up my menus again, it automatically named my page on the list. So let's go back to the main page. For this assignment, I would like my students to text mark a PDF. So how do we do that? Well, to get a PDF on the page, we're going to come up to our menus and choose Insert. From here, I can choose File, and I can Insert File Printout. And notice it even says PDF for me right there. So when I click on that, it's going to ask me to go find it. So I'm going to click on Choose File, and it's going to open a screen where I can go find it. So I'm going to come over here to my desktop, and I happen to have a History of Chocolate essay that I would like my kids to work on. So I'm just going to select it and then click Insert. And you'll notice that it loads right here on the page for me, even if it's multiple pages. Additionally, I have the original PDF right here at the top. So if somebody does need access to that, they can double click it right here. But since this is on the page, we really don't even need to worry about that. So our next step will make this easier for our students, but it's going to require us to go to the installed version of OneNote. So up here in our toolbar, we're going to click Open in Browser, but instead of Open in Browser, we're going to choose Open in App, because we want the full functionality of the program. Now this happens to be the first time I've opened this on this computer, and this might happen to you as well, so you might get to choose between the OneNote 2016 app or OneNote for Windows 10. Now, if neither of these appear, you can go into the App Store and download the OneNote for Windows 10 app. It's part of our SDOC approved list, so that's not a problem. So, because it's the one most people have, I'm going to choose OneNote for 2016. However, you can also choose OneNote for Windows 10. They'll both do what I'm about to show you. So then I'm going to click OK. And it opens our program. Yes, I want to continue. All right, and it looks like it loaded our page. Now, all we need to do is find that PDF image that it loaded. We're going to right click on it, and we're going to choose Set Picture as Background. What this does is it locks that PDF image in place. So now it's seen as part of the background of our page instead of an image floating on top of it. Why did we want to do this? Well, it prevents students from accidentally moving it around resizing it, or even deleting it. So it's a good thing and it helps your kids. But once that's done, we're finished in the main program. All we need to do is close that program because it's automatically going to sync for us and come back to our browser. Now, the beautiful part is this is all finished for us. We're ready to give this to students. If you wanted to, could I put directions at the top? Certainly. All I need to do is double click anywhere on the page and I can easily get a text box to put in some, some directions. So now, let's head over to our assignment. Up at the top of the page, I'm going to click on the Assignments tab. And it looks like this will be my first assignment for this team. So let's go ahead and click on Create. And we're going to choose Assignment. Let's go ahead and give this a title. I'm going to call this Text Marking. For instructions, I'm going to say, follow the link to the PDF article and text mark your document like we learned to do in class. Now this is the key. We're going to click on Add Resources and we're going to go find that page in the class notebook. So I'm going to come up here and click on Class Notebook and then I put this in my content library under my Classwork Masters and then here is my page, text marking. So I'm going to select it and hit attach. Now it's asking me where inside of my students sections do I want this to appear? Well I want this to be under classwork. So I'm going to click on that and then click done at the bottom. Now I want you to notice something before we move on. It states that students edit their own copy. What this means is that the system is going to duplicate this page for us and provide a copy to each one of our students without us needing to do anything else. So I'm going to go ahead and make this worth 10 points. Yep, I want it to go to all my students in my MITD class. And I am good if this posts on the general channel. So now I'm going to click Assign. And there we go. It looks like our text marking assignment has now been distributed and set up for our students. Now to answer the question, why do I want to go through my class notebook to do PDFs with my students? Let's flip over to one of the students' perspectives and take a look at how this works for them.
All right, and so as you can see, we're over here in Mr. Tripper's team. He's a student in my class. And we're looking at the general channel, and right here is the announcement that was made for our text marking assignment. So let's go ahead and click on View Assignment to check this out. Once we open that assignment, you'll see that it gives the students their directions, and they have a direct link right here as a button to the text marking assignment. When we click that, not only does it take us to the assignment, but it actually opens up the class notebook for us to his specific page right here in the assignment. He doesn't need to go anywhere else. He doesn't need to go searching for it. He just clicks the link and he's where he needs to be. Now there are times when the student might be in a view only mode. If that's the case, right up at the top, they're going to have a button that says edit and they can choose whether they want to edit it here in Teams or in a browser. So how do we interact with this page? Well, first of all, I have full viewing rights on it. And because it's my own, well, all I have to do is go up to the Draw tab. I can add text or type to the page. I can ink on the page with a pen. I can use highlighters. I have multiple different choices for ink colors. And yes, there's even math tools. So there's a lot that can be done in here. So for example, if I needed to say circle some of our vocabulary, I can choose a color. I can choose my pen and then I can come right down here and mark right over top of this. Additionally, if I happen to be on a touch screen and want to use a stylus, it is compatible with that as well. Now, what if I didn't want to use inking, but instead I wanted to actually type? All I have to do is get the type tool. I can click somewhere on the background, which gives me a new text box. Then I can type in my answers and move them to wherever I need them to be on the page. When I let go, the text box disappears. So it's very easy for students to both type and use inking on a PDF. Now when we're done with this, all I have to do is hit the close button up in the top right, and my assignment is ready to turn in. So let's go ahead and hit turn in and head back to the teacher's view to see how this works. Now back here in the teacher's view, you can see we have one of eight turned in. So let's click on this assignment and you'll see that most of my students say not turned in, but Jack's here is turned in. At any point in time, I can click on any of these links and be taken directly to the student's page to see their work. So let's take a look at Jack's. When I click on this, it loads the class notebook for me right here inside of Teams. Again, I don't have to go looking for it. That's the beautiful part in this. And I can see exactly what he did. Also, just like Jack, if I click anywhere on the page in the background, I can type a response back to him, or I can come up under draw, and I can also add ink, just like he did. So I can give him some feedback, give points, and return it to him if I wish. And once I'm done with Jack's, all I have to do is click close up here at the top. As you've probably experienced, working with PDFs on student assignments can be tricky. However, going through the class notebook does help simplify the process and hopefully helps keep your kids inside of Teams.